Okay, I'm going to create a simple file here. Um, let's call it video streaming. And scenario one, I'll call that basic to start with. Uh, I'll have a logical scenario. I'm going to whiz through a lot of the earlier configuration. And I shall start off by putting in couple of routers. We're going to have two Ethernet workstations. I'll connect these together with these are very low capacity link DS1 and I'll connect these to these routers in a very unnormal scenario with 10 base T. Give myself some ability to have traffic. My application configuration, my profile configuration. So what I'd like to do is to set up this workstation here uh, as a video client, let's say. And let's set up this workstation as a video server. Um, I'm going to add a few applications. So let's say that I want to add three applications. The first application I'm going to add, of course, would be video. And let's say I set that as being low resolution video. But let's just edit that so I can alter it however my model has, has told me. So my incoming file size is typically an exponential distribution. Let's say that's 0 0.02. An outgoing um, constant of a very large number. So in my simulation I only generate one packet. File size, incoming... Well, that is typically constant, 1,400. And then outgoing. Okay, let's make that a constant one byte in size. Okay, that's a little bit too small. Let's make that 60. So, that's my video application set up. I'm going to add some background traffic. And let's say I start off with database. And I'll add some low load database. And let's say I'll add some FTP and I'll add some low load FTP. And that gives me my three applications that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to generate two profiles. One profile for the video, video profile, and I'll add my video application. I'm going to generate another profile which is going to be for background traffic and I want to add my database and my FTP applications to this so database FTP so I've now set up three applications video database FTP I've set up two profiles one typically for transmitting the video and one for the for the background traffic that I want to have on this network I'll start off by configuring my video client and my video server and I'll just check that those work. So let's set up my video profile onto my video client and my video server. I want to support the service here. And in order to check that, I'm going to run a simulation. I'm going to look at the point to point utilization in bits per second in both directions. I'll run the simulation for say three minutes and I am hopefully able to see that in one direction I have what appears to be video traffic and let's say that's streaming at between 500 and 600 kilobits per second. And in the other direction I have, to start with the, um, the routing protocol information being transmitted, and then I then have that one packet going in, in the other direction. So my video traffic is being, let's, let's say it's being requested, and then it's being streamed from a video server to the video client. That's how I've set this up. I'd now like to add some background traffic. In order to do that, I'm going to add a server to each of these routers. And I'm going to add a LAN to each of these routers. 
Now, I'll connect all of these together with 10 base T. And then for each of these servers, I'm going to edit all of their attributes, apply select changes to all objects, and I'm going to add the services for database and FTP, for example. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Three objects changed, and I'm going to do the same thing for these three objects. Select my similar nodes. They're selected. Edit attributes. Apply changes, and I'm going to add the sorry supported profiles here. And supported profile will be background traffic. Let's click OK. Three objects changed. That's good. Let's run my simulation, and I'll see the effect of adding that background traffic. Now, what I should find in my simulation log is all applications defined below database application, the background traffic and the profile configuration will never start and the reason is that my background traffic profile contains two applications but the order that they will be run in is serial so one after the other and because neither of them finish until the end of the simulation one of those applications will never run so let's fix this fairly common problem I'll go back into my profile definition and in my profile we can see that I have my background traffic, I have my two applications, and because my operation mode is set to serial, and because these applications will run until the end of the profile, my FTP application will never actually start. So I need to change that to simultaneous, and that will fix that error. I'll then need to run the simulation again in order to get the results with both the database and the FTP traffic. Now this time I just have a look at my log and I can see that I don't have that error, so that's good. And if I look at my results, let's look at the results between node 0 and node 1. I can see my throughput. Well, I can't tell any difference in my throughput in this direction. It seems to be shifted up slightly before, if you remember, it was between 500 and 600. And now in the other direction, well, I have a large amount when all the applications start for all of these 10 servers in here and then it's barely getting over 2.5 kilobits per second. So let's let's do a couple of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this scenario. I'm going to call it basic only video and I'm going to go back to that previous scenario basic and I'm going to call that basic only background. So what I can do, if I go to my basic only video, I can fail all of these background traffic generators. There's no need for me to fail the servers, but I, I will anyway. And I can then run this simulation so that I have one scenario with only the background traffic on. Uh, sorry, I have one scenario with only the video traffic on. One scenario with only the video traffic, and we can see that here. In one direction, pre-500 and 600 kilobits per second, in the other direction, of course, the request and the routing information. You can see the routing information being transmitted here, but because the, the difference in the y-axis is so great, it's barely visible. I'll then go to my only background, and I'll fail my video client. And that gives me the ability to look at the amount of traffic that is being generated <coughs> by my background applications. And so in this case, on this link, of course you can have a look at it on this link if you wanted to. On this link, I am generating, well, at an absolute peak, 30 kilobits per second. And then just below that, 5 kilobits per second sort of at a, as an average. 
So what this says to me is my video traffic, if you remember, um, actually let's plot it in one direction going backwards for a couple of scenarios. My video traffic was generating between 500 and 600 kilobits per second, and my background traffic is generating less than 10 kilobits per second. So at a maximum, at the very maximum, I'm generating 700, 733 kilobits per second, and I know that, that these two points aren't synchronized. But that's far less than the capacity of this cable here, and this is a DS1 cable, the capacity of which is 1.544 megabits per second. So now that I have the amount of traffic my video application is generating, now I have the amount of traffic my background application is generating, I know how much I need to fill up this link before I notice problems uh, in my quality of using the video application. So let's do a few things to see what happens when I add some more background traffic. Now one way of adding background traffic is going to my application definition and setting this to high load on a database. And let's say for the FTP I'm going to set that to high load. So I'm doing this blindly, I've got no idea how much traffic is going to be generated, but this time I can see the effect of adding this additional traffic. I run my simulation and what I have here is a very large amount of traffic being generated. So it is very bursty as we can see, but it does go up to 800 kilobits per second. And perhaps you could view that as an average, an ongoing average of 200 kilobits per second, but it is bursty. So that's one method of increasing the amount of traffic that my applications generate. Another method, if I were to take these nodes here, I could increase the number of workstations. So I could make that 15, let's say. And so instead of 10 workstations per LAN generating traffic, I now have 15, which means the amount of traffic that I should generate, I would expect to be increased by 50%. We can see that in the in the graphs here. Perhaps a running average of 400 kilobits per second. Okay, there we are. Thank you very much for listening.